Step into the ring. How is it going, Columbia State Community College? I am Jem. I will be your caster for today. Welcome to the Bravis Virtual Esports Open. We are Bravis Esports, bringing you this event on behalf of your school. Um, we are an organization devoted to helping esports communities, grassroots esports communities, grow wherever we can find them in whatever shape or form they take. We work with schools, universities, parks and rec departments, businesses, wherever we can get some people playing video games together and making some friends. I haven't had a chance to take a look at uh, the bracket just yet. It's looking like we've got seven people, I want to say, for the event today. That's a pretty solid number. Going to be able to get a decent bracket out of that. Starting off with Golgotha's Terror versus LaCroix Boy. Uh, I'm going to go and take a quick look and see. Uh, I can probably figure out which one this Luigi here is. I have the, the super secret list of what everybody's name is and stuff. Ha, okay. So, Golgotha's Terror is Danny here. All right, so that means that we are waiting for LaCroix Boy. As soon as they can get in, we will make sure to get the game going. Hopefully they get in fairly soon. So what can happen, if we're not careful, is the lobby can expire. Run out of time for it. Gotta, gotta keep their bandwidth, you know? Doesn't grow on trees like Discord will tell you. Discord will tell you that it doesn't grow on trees. It just, just so we're clear here, I'm not... Not uh, faulting them with miseducating people. All right.
If anybody knows... Uh, oh, sorry for the mishap. Well, actually, okay, I, I misread. We will have Golgoth... Didn't misread. Um, it was... Okay, so the announcement's changed. So it's going to be Golgotha's Terror here, a.k.a. Achuzi, a.k.a. Danny, versus Ghosty Trickster. Ghosty Trickster. They are there in the Discord server. So we're just waiting for them to be able to pop in. A big welcome to Doovy. Got a few things going on. We got some events. Got some events. Got some shows. We're doing Twitch things. <clears throat> I'm a little bit tempted to just sneak into the lobby real quick and play some video games, but I don't want to slow down the event if uh, Ghosty Trickster does manage to make it in here. Okay, here we go. I am told by uh, Golgotha's Terror that uh, they're figuring it out and they'll be in in a second. It sounds like they might might know each other here. That would be Pog. Smash tournament with the homies. There they are. All right, awesome. Oh, and we've got a Woomy. We love ourselves a Woomy in this house. Trickster and a terror. Yes, this is true. Uh, Synchrony is also engaged in the process of. Uh, oops. Oh no. Did I get in in time? Oh no. <laughs> well, uh. <laughs> The sparks are really flying there. Oh, man. Party foul. We're going to miss game one here. Apologies. So, I guess we might as well uh, take some notes here on uh, the battle as we can see it from the ring. Uh, we've got a Luigi, maybe, probably not, and a an Inkling, maybe, probably not. Take a, a quick bet here on uh, whether the players actually play the characters that are in their profile picture. Because in my experience, it's a total toss-up. One way or the other. Okay, so... We can at least get this set up. And, uh, we'll... We'll see. See if this ends up being the case. Alrighty. So for those who are unaware of how this tournament's going to work, it's going to be a double elimination bracket. Uh, that means that you must lose twice in order to be eliminated. So make sure that if you lose a match, you're not just leaving, because you will have more. Uh, I believe we've posted the challenge link. No, I don't think we have. Let me uh, 
make sure that that gets posted here real quick. Alrighty. Um, getting Korean fried chicken together and playing board games. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Alrighty. Well, so double elimination bracket, you gotta lose twice in order to be eliminated. The uh, procedures for how to play can be found in the Discord server. This is a pr the Discord server I'm talking about right now is a private Discord server that is made just for this one event. Um, we do have a community Discord server as uh, Bravest in general, but uh, that that's the one that you get by hitting exclamation mark Discord in chat. So this one. But the Discord I'm talking about is specific to this event, and in that event-specific Discord, there should be a rules section, which shows what the rule set is going to look like. And more importantly, for the competitor's sake, there is a match procedure section. Match procedure is where you want to go to figure out what needs to happen in between matches. Um, a lot of these players are going to get this stuff taken care of uh, off-screen, um, and you know a lot of them already know what's going on, so they're gonna do it pretty quickly. But uh, if you're if you happen to be new to competitive Smash and that's something you're not familiar with, you need to learn how it is that you're going to play this match. Check out match procedure, and it should be made clear from that. Um, there is a process of striking to the stage that you want to play on for game one. Um, so we won't get to see which stage it is that they got decided to go to, but. Um, we will potentially be able to see, you know, what their picks and bands end them up at after the first game. And there's also a procedure for picking your character. Uh, if you do want it to be a double blind character selection, um, that is possible. Most people prefer to just kind of get into it a little bit faster. Save, your th saves them save themselves the downtime, you know. Please also make sure that if at all possible, you are using wired internet for this event. Um, it's much better to have that stable of a connection. Um, Wi-Fi, you can cut in and out. There's packet loss that can happen there. Uh, and it can be a little bit tricky to stay in the game long enough to finish it sometimes. A lot of times we uh, end up getting kicked out as a spectator because the connection isn't good enough or somebody just disconnects completely and we have to figure out Okay, what do we do from here? So, prefer not to have to put up with those kinds of situations. If you've got that Ethernet adapter, that's the way to go. Salmon run session with Jimmy. So when I get the, the all-powerful ping. Yes, of course. Well, have fun doing salmon run. Uh, Debbie is a competitive Splatoon 2 player, and that is a game mode in Splatoon in case... Any of y'all are not aware. All right. Danny and Taylor still going here. Should probably be over pretty soon. Uh, match of Smash isn't super long. I'm going to take a quick look at the bracket. Bracket is super secret um, because uh, we don't want people playing matches early and uh, missing opportunity, opportunity to be on stream. Um, but it does look like we've got uh, our other round of winners semis ready to go already. So that happened nice and quick. Pajarito. Not sure that's exactly how that's going to be pronounced. Winning out over Tangerine. We've got Zuchi winning out over My Name Blake. So Tangerine and My Name Blake will be duking it out now in the loser's bracket. Um, 
Loser's bracket is where you go to if you have lost one round but not two. And anyone who makes it into the loser's bracket can still win the tournament. It's just a little bit harder. You have to win more matches in a row. This round is taking some time here. Might have a, a nice close match between these two players. It'll be exciting to see how this finishes up with the game, too. On the other side of brackets... It looks like, let's see if this match has been called yet before I say anything. All right, yeah, we're going to have our other round of winners semifinals, which will be Pajarito and Tsuchi on stream after this match is done. I don't believe I have the uh, characters correct either. I think I saw like a, a Mithra on one side. So it'll be interesting to see what the players actually have chosen. And I'm excited. We do actually have the, the Pyramithra character icons now. Um, the Smash Ultimate scoreboard program that we use made by a Detective SSBU, it is updated uh, pretty promptly, but Sometimes uh, the software isn't up to date on our ends, and so in the past we've had to kind of improvise a little bit. Whenever there's a Sephiroth in play, we need to be like, eh, Marth has a long sword, right? Yeah, close enough. We'll just, we'll just, you know, here's a white haired Marth, right? Yeah, basically the same character. Totally, yeah, uh huh. But now we've actually got Sephiroth! Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, it's exciting. Also, we take song requests. So, anything in the lineup here? Anybody's interested in hearing? We'll run it. Here's some hype Pokemon music for you. Man, this round is actually taking a while. Might be playing kind of projectile-based characters. Might just be really tanky and lasting a long time. Interested to see how this is going once the match is over here. Neutral air. <laughs> Rivers in the desert from Persona 5. Let's take a look. They do. There you go, Debbie. And let me know if that's not uh, if that's coming through too loudly or anything. I think the uh, sound slider on my capture card got mixed up a little bit since I last used it, so it might be off by a touch. So any fine tuning, just let me know. I can get that fixed for you. I believe we do have the sound a little bit lower than the sound effects currently, and that's partly by design. Just to make sure that uh, 
music doesn't get too repetitive, make sure that we can hear what's important in the game, and that it's not overpowering compared to my voice and whatnot. But that might also impact your ability to hear it. interesting those of you who are on windows computers what time does it say that it is okay never mind not like this <laughs> This match, I, I want to say this is on pace for a timeout. I think it's been like about eight minutes. This is kind of wild. So, Debbie, it looked like there was a disparity between the time stamp on Discord and the time that my computer was listing. All right, there it is. And after much deliberation, after much uh, debate, we have Ghosty Trickster out on top. Ghosty Trickster playing the Mario. And then Golgoth is Terra terror on the pyra mithra so we've got all that figured out now all right oh looks like we lost someone i didn't think that was the second game We'll bring him back in for a sec. They might not have been aware that the matches are best of three rather than best of one. Um, so the set is not over just because of a single win. Wouldn't it be wild if while i was switching the music the players dropped out picked another stage went back in and that was actually game two that just finished i don't think that happened that seems very unrealistic for them to do it in that amount of time but that that's just the kind of thing that would happen to me you know ghosty trickster they're just tricking us that's what's happening here they're being all stealthy and sneaky they're actually right behind us right now oh they got kicked from the arena they're saying all right wasn't on purpose well <laughs> nintendo online like synchrony says does like to do that on occasion Sometimes it's just like, hey, you know that video game you were playing and, and having fun playing? Well, what if I were to just stop you from doing that? What, 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 what would you do? It's 
like that that annoying kid from like middle school who's like, heh heh, heh. what would you do if I if I just poked you? Heh heh, poke. Heh heh heh, heh. poke poke. Nintendo Online be like, what would you do if I just just dropped right now? <laughs> drop, <laughs> drop, drop. Oopsie, was that a tournament set? <laughs> when you still hear the lobby sounds of match finished, or does the player actually cancel those sounds out? So I know that the the music in the lobby stops playing once you go into the music select. And uh, it also takes your token out of the spectator stands when you're changing the music around. So it is actually possible that that gets messed up, but hard to say. The metaphysics of the Smash Lobby are an enigma to me. <laughs> the metaphysics. I am the god of this realm. I have spawned it according to my will. All right, we've got to switch to Kirby here. Blue Kirby, respectable choice. Very popular one there. All right, let's see how this goes. So Pyramitha, Mithra have been very popular of late. They're obviously, you know, a relatively new DLC character. Oh, goodness. Two. One. Is this why it Go. took so long? Man, this is this is some brawl Wi-Fi I'm watching right here. Yikes! Okay, so now we know why that took so long. All right, so we got a jab combo out of Taylor. It is really interesting, you know, once you start getting into the playing of the game, how it works under these circumstances. Because on the one hand, yeah, it's going to mess you up sometimes because your inputs might get eaten. But what it also does is it kind of makes things almost like more task conditions. Like... You have longer to react to things than you would under normal circumstances. And granted, they're going to be delayed a bit, but it kind of lets you predict better and think more critically in the match and time things better. Alrighty. That was a cool pose. They both land on opposite sides of each other, having swung and missed with their swords. Got a knockdown situation, chooses neutral get up, shields the hammer, which is good, and is gonna roll in to do some damage and take the lead back from Kirby. Lightning. Oh Thunder. man. Unfortunately, the uh, in-game timer is also going to lag. So the uh, the timeout isn't going to save us from the lag here. Um, we've definitely been going for well over a minute at this point. But in-game time, it's only been 45 seconds. Exactly 1% separating these two players right now. And they both go for the side B. Mithras comes out first and is going to eventually deal some damage to Kirby here. Huh. It's interesting that there's a frame of that rock animation that's just like a bunch of scribbles on the screen.
We're really getting a showcase of uh, how beautiful the animation is in this game. I, I know that sounds like a joke, but like honestly... Like, who would think to throw in all of these like various colored slashes and swirls on top of everything? It makes the game feel so lively and colorful. I think that's something that uh, you often miss looking at other platform fighters. Like, they might look a little bit flat. And it's because they're all the, these flashes, swirls, spins, and sparkles that are happening all over the place that just give the game a little bit more life. Winner of the last game was the... Uh, current Kirby player, Mario player at the time, Ghosty Trickster. So if Kirby wins, then it will end on that game two and will not go to a game three. One hopes for the sake of uh, getting done on time <laughs> that that might be the case, but I'll never blame a player for trying to make a comeback, even under these circumstances. If you're ever wondering who the TO is rooting for, it's always the player who, if they win, will make the tournament last less time. It's a 1 0, the, the TO probably wants a 2 0. <laughs> Sometimes that's not true. Sometimes they just want a, a hype match. Like, I've definitely had some sets that I've been really excited to see go the distance. Alright, so we're coming up on two minutes into the game in game time. Still no stocks taken. Trying to figure out what it is that's sleeping there. I don't know what manner of creature that is. Who is doing the snooze there, Tsuchi? And a charge smash attack goes unpunished here. Taylor opting to stick the platforms there. Comes down with an air dodge, but parries! Only goes for a forward tilt to punish. Does have Mithra off stage, so. Oh. And they are not going to be able to eat that. At least not in a nutritional way. Ooh, goes for the forward smash. Golgotha's terror opts just to shield it and try and get out of the way. Going to go for the jab combo. It's not going to KO, probably. Yeah, Kirby's going to be able to make it back from fine from that, but high percent for Kirby at this point. It's not going to take an awful lot to take them out. And they're coming down with an aggressive aerial. Unable to react is Golgotha's terror. They throw out a side B. Kirby throws out a rock. And they shield it. Oh, but then they roll behind him. Oh, there's a side B. Is that going to KO? Not quite. Right up to the ceiling there with it. Another one might do the job, but for now, Ghosty Trickster still in the mix. Oh, that might do it. Nope. Able to get the forward air out just in time. Again, only a forward tilt, so not a lot of KO options that they're going for. The rock comes down. There's a charged up smash, I believe, but Ghost of Trickster gets out of there. Side B might do it here. And that will KO off the top. Come on, Mithra. Ray Han is doing the snooze from Pokemon Sword and Shield. But he has animal ears in the emote. Okay. 
All right. So we're more than halfway through the uh, time limit for this match here. And only one stock has been taken so far. So this might mean that we're here for a timeout. It's the pace that we're on right now. Side B does catch Ghosty Trickster. Where Pyra at, though? An interesting question, because uh, typically the plan is for a Pyra Mithra player to use Mithra for the low percents, where you need combos, where you need weak hits that are going to keep them close to you, and where you need good mobility for in, you know frame data for a strong neutral. Uh, and then you switch to Pyra when you need the KO at higher percents. But it looks like so far... Golgotha's Terror has been opting instead to stick to the Mithra all the way through. I'm gonna get forward tilted away here. Pyra probably be so busted in 3 P FPS. <laughs> Thing is, while, like, yeah, if, if you're playing it ideally in real time, that's gonna work. With latency, if you make a mistake and accidentally commit to something you don't mean to, Pyro would also be a big pain to have to try and play with. Like, imagine accidentally doing a smash attack as Pyra, and the opponent can get away. And the back air will do it. Ghosty Trickster able to take one more stock. We are currently on timeout pace. So we are now fully halfway through the game. I know I said that earlier, but my math is bad. Down under three and a half minutes, which is the halfway point in the match. Both players still at two stocks. Ghosty Trickster a little bit higher up there. We'll see if they can make a little bit of a comeback here. I, I love the effect of uh, Kirby in the background being duplicated. It's like Kirby has this many jumps. Yes, that bracket uh, command has not been fixed up for this event. Um, I think I can... Uh... Well, yeah, okay, there it is. That'll work. Smash attack whiffs, so Ghosty Trickster able to get down safely enough. But uh, full stock lead so far for Golgotha's Terror, so they do stand to make a comeback here. Ghosty Trickster going for the inhale. See, like right there. Positioning yourself precisely enough to hit that attack as Mithra, you know, she moves pretty quick, and you're having to account for a significant amount of latency. Um, there's just a certain amount of precision that gets lost in low FPS conditions. And so, even though on paper I feel like Pyra is a great choice, in practice, it might be a lot harder to effectively hit someone. Oh, and there's an inhale. Kirby's got luscious hair right now. Looking absolutely gorgeous. Love that for him. And the rock comes out. See if Taylor can capitalize it all off of this knockup. Ooh, 
no recover. Use the recovery move. If uh, Ghosty Trickster chases that a little bit better, that could be a good amount of damage, or maybe even an edge guard situation. Because uh, at that point, Mithra has absolutely no recovery resources, and only up B or side B, I guess. Excuse me. All the better for VOD reviewing, you know, Blake? Uh, that's, that's what we're going for here, totally. So you can see, you know, all of the micro. Oh. Who gets the hit here? It looks like that might actually do it. I think we're going to have Golgotha's Terror taking a game here and sending us to a game three. More of a turn-based strategy game. Oh, goodness. And the frame rate's back. Neat. All right. It looks like what we're going to do... Never mind. <laughs> uh, T.O. is going to suggest that we take the next match off stream. Um, could potentially help with the lag in addition to giving us a better viewing experience here. But it'll give the loser's bracket some time to catch up. It's not the end of the world. Syncrity, uh, the first match was won by Ghosty Trickster. If I'm not mistaken here. So this this match does need to be played. We've already uh, gotten through 30 seconds of in-game time, so this is actually going a little bit faster than it did last round. Oh! I must have misreported the scores, because it looks like uh, the score has been reported as a 2-0. So maybe I uh, mis misreported it earlier? I could have sworn, though, that uh, Golgotha's terror stayed... All right, well, if that is the case, this should only be a best of three. So... If that's how that went, then uh, we should not be playing this match, and... Uh, let's see if we can do something about this. I don't think uh, y'all would be too remiss if I were to quit out of this. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, I'm pressing the quit button. Oh, 
hold on. That yeah, that is an incorrect. That score report isn't right. Cause uh we've got a screenshot of the match going unless I've got the players mixed up. I don't think I do. Yeah, Ghosty Trickster is Taylor. And we have a screenshot of the winner being Taylor. So this match does need to be played. This is one-to-one -one still. I was correct on the score reporting there. All right, well. I don't know why the uh, quit button isn't working, but I guess it's for the best because this match does need to get played out. All right, one more side B will take Kirby out at this point. And we'll help level things for the sake of Golgotha's Terror. familiar with the uh, John Boyce, the YouTube content creator, um, does a lot of sports content, but uh, is also a fan of investigating sports using the video games therein. And he's got a series called The Fumble Dimension, where he tries to create these dystopian alternate universes within Madden. So, for example, every new draft prospect is the smallest, weakest, slowest, worst player that the game will allow. And just completely ruining the sport as a whole, as a profession. By making every single player trash at the game. It also does things like uh, trying to make a play in football that lasts forever by just forever running around on the last play of the game because it's guaranteed to end. And uh, it's a whole bunch of different stuff. And it, uh, it sort of feels like we're, we're in the fumble dimension a little bit right now. We're just in a game of Smash. It's going to take a very, very long time to end. It's okay, guys. There's more. This is just the hand warmer. <laughs> hey, good catch there. Ghosty Trickster getting some good damage on that. Not able to follow up, unfortunately. Jumps over to the other platform. Trying to hit the rock here, but that's going to get punished with a side B from Golgotha's Terror. And the roll tricks the Kirby. Decides to just roll backwards again and go for another side B. You know, these would be perfect conditions to try and uh, lab out that combo that's just a little bit too fast for you to try. Like, just run up, pop a down tilt out, and then you can kind of buffer every move in the order that you want it. Nice follow-up up air. Gonna have to avoid this rock and then get back in there. Tries for the side B, but Kirby hasn't unrocked yet. Pops out of it. Tries to get in there with a fair. Side B is gonna whiff. Rock is gonna whiff. Ooh, clever. Reinitiating the rock to catch Golgotha in the middle 
of that side B. And an up B. This is an opportunity for Golgotha's Terror here to get a punish. Doesn't end up landing the hit. And is going to get side B'd. This won't KO until about 195 or so from what we've seen. Ooh. Goes in just a little too early. And see, there's that precision that can be lacking in a laggy environment. The Rock might actually just KO. Yes, it does. So, Ghosty Trickster tricking Golgotha's Terror here. Oh, but there's the Invincible Forward Smash. Doesn't respect Respawn Platform Invincibility. We've seen many a stock fall just from that mistake. Waiting, it looks like, probably to side B. But that is not a move that's going to actually connect in that position. Goes for it again anyway and catches it on the backswing. <laughs> Pajarito, uh, the, the first game we accidentally were out of the match. Um because I was uh, in the process, I think, of changing the music. And uh, the match started without me being in the spectator stands, and it still took an extremely long time, much longer than we were expecting. Um, my internet is gig fiber. That's both up and down. So, I mean, that doesn't necessarily speak to the stability of it but I have found it to be very reliable. Pretty even so far. I believe you, Mr. Streamer. Thank you. I appreciate the trust. Oh, gets a weak hit of the up smash, but doesn't actually manage to make it connect. Stronger hits. Slight damage lead right now to Golgotha's Terror. Has stage position right now on the Kirby player. But does keep side being into that rock. And uh, that did get them KO'd on the last stock here. It would be good to see them going for an option on uh, Punish. It's uh, a little bit faster to start up. Nice up B to catch Kirby with both hits there. I'd like to see some, like, aerial combos here. Um, there definitely are some positions where I think Golgotha's Terror could be going up to attack Ghosty Trickster in the air rather than just waiting on the ground to side B. Because it seems like Ghosty Trickster is catching on to the fact that the side B is always coming out and is positioning around it sometimes. A little bit of a mix-up could uh, do some good there. Oh, I really like that attempt at a back air. I'm surprised it didn't hit, to be honest. And the side B does come out. Not going to KO, but a sizable amount of knockback. And let's see if an edge guard could come out of that. The up B does pin Kirby out of the air, and now Ghosty Trickster are going to have to find a way down. Oh, and I don't think that's the way to do it. That's going to be some big damage. Is that going to KO? It will. Golgotha's Terror with the come be from behind 2-1 victory over Ghosty Trickster. And possibly the longest best of three I have ever commentated in my life. Am I the final boss? For you, baby, I could be. Definitely a possibility. But let's focus on getting this tournament run in the meantime. Goodness, does it need to forge onward here. 
We've got Pajarito versus Suchi. Probably mispronouncing both of those names, but you know what? They can correct me in the Twitch chat if they don't like it. Alrighty. So we are getting into winners semifinals. That last round was also winners semifinals, so that's my fault for not having that updated. Um, we'll need uh, our two competitors to leave here, and so sorry to do this to you. But get out. Be gone. Uh, and we're going to have Pajarito and Suchi join us here. So you should have the information you need in the announcements channel. Awesome. I'm going to do a quick double check and see if we can identify which one of y'all that is. That's probably Pajarito. Yeah, okay, and the other one's Suchi. That makes sense. Okay. Pajarito on the Inkling. And we've got a cloud coming out of Zuchi. Three, two, one, go! Oh, hey, look at that. The game is functioning normally again. All right. So we've got a really nice setup here from Pajarito so far. Had a neutral win here and there from Tsuchi, but so far only getting that cross slash out. Good zoning here though, and does have limit, so there's a lot of damage potential on Cloud at the moment. Just to survive this edge guard here, not get two frames. Oh, that bomb's gonna do it. Taking full advantage of Cloud's mediocre recovery. You hit him too far off stage, he's just kind of not coming back. This is not uh, Advent Children Cloud here, where he can just kind of fly if he wants to. And Pyarito looking really strong on this Inkling has a great grasp of the neutral game here and is converting really well off of the openings that they're getting. Like the blade beam, gets in with the down tilt but not able to follow up. It's another hit. Opts to go for a limit instead of to, to try and follow it and continue to punish. Jab combo comes out. He fills the ink tank just a little bit. Important to remember to do that sometimes as an inkling main. Well spaced back air, baiting his opponent into getting up on the ledge and then. Oh my goodness, that was a three star. Inkling wins. Wow. Pajarito looking really strong. Looking like a favorite to win it. We will have to see, you know, Golgotha's Terror, <laughs> they're uh, a little bit difficult to judge because the, the conditions under which they were playing were just very difficult to play in. And it might well be that they're a lot more technical and uh, skillful of a player than we were able to see in that match. But uh, based on the... The rudimentary game plan that we were seeing, very heavily reliant on those side Bs. Right now, my bet is on Pajarito as the favorite to win it. So that's my hot take right there. I think uh, Pajarito is going to be able to punish those side Bs and be able to uh, take them out. And so, we'll see. Zuchi also looking pretty formidable on this cloud. Uh, definitely has a solid understanding of the punish game relative to the players we've seen so far. Just uh, getting caught out in neutral a few too many times, and uh, when he gets off stage, just in a lot of trouble. Three, two, one, go! 
<laughs> Devi, the uh, Hydra Splatling main. Talking about the uh, splat bombs that she has to put up with all the time as a backliner. Sushi seems to be struggling a little bit with deciding whether they want to charge limit or go back in. Um, oh, the limit up B. Going to be able to get back from that. So that ends up saving them there, but they need to stall to get around the bomb and just can't get enough height. They really need to be avoiding being put off stage. And I feel like uh, keeping the pressure on the Inkling so that they can't throw those projectiles is probably the better look. I don't think uh, he's going to be successful at camping out such a fast character here. Mariko catches him jumping in. Really good stage control from Pyorito so far. Oh, there's the up out of shield. Let's see what Sushi can do with it. And Pyorito just gets down to the ground for free. Almost no punish there. Um, I'd like to see Cloud trying to capitalize a little bit more on the juggle position. And he's able to get it. to those who heard the Slack notification. I know whenever I hear that on a stream, I just immediately check my notifs. <laughs> Alright, so that was that was a good time to charge limit. Threatens him with the cross slash, not gonna catch him. And Pajarito just gets out of the corner for free. Oh, gets grounded, and that's gonna be it for that stock. Ayarito only has to take one more stock and still has all three. Great dash attack there. Baits him in with the back air, making uh, Arito think that he can get a punish in time, and then throwing out a very fast, aggressive option. Nice forward air as well. Suchi's got some callouts. He's got some neutral wins. I think it's that uh, when he gets a neutral win, sometimes uh, isn't capitalizing on it as hard as he can. Whereas when Arito gets a hit making it count every time. Getting an edge guard situation, keeping center stage, tacking on a lot more damage with combos. Lots of different things going on. Uh, but when uh, Tsuchi's getting a hit, oftentimes it seems like Pajarito is able to just get away. Might be out of shield here. Tsuchi... Playing definitely the best that they have so far in this set, but you hate to see it happen from being down, you know, on last stock, 120%. Seems like this would have been a lot closer a match. Come out earlier. Neutral is just super clean from them right now. Oh, and they. Spot dodge, but they're able to get the spot dodge out as well. Are they actually going to bring this to last stock? Oh, that almost KOs. Oh, they go for the up air. It's not going to connect, and the up air will do it from the inkling. A valiant effort at the end from Zuchi, but Ayariko is just all over him that game. Well played, WP, WP. Okay. So that brings us to winner's finals. It'll be Golgotha's Terror versus Pajarito. So we will remove Suchi. But 
I presume Pyarito will still be on stream here to play that match, unless we've got different instructions from our TO in the announcements channel. Synchrony is typing there. Hold on in just a second. Yep, Golgotha's Terror will be up here next. Fingers crossed that the uh, weak connection was more on Ghosty Trickster's part than on Golgotha's Terror part. Terror's part. While we wait for them to come in, a little bit about Bravest Esports. Uh, like I mentioned before, our goal is to help esports organizations at a grassroots level start at, you know, local communities, wherever we can find them. So schools like yours. Um, we also do leagues for groups like high schools and middle schools, for parks and rec departments, for businesses, all sorts of different places. We also have some content that we make here. Um, there is a... Uh, Platform Fighter show. We say Platform Fighter because we're going to be including Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, we also have some Melee players on staff. Um, might also, you know, try out some Slap City. I think I've got that on my uh, Steam account and I've been interested to try playing it. Maybe some Brawlhalla if we've got some of those folks out there. But uh, we'll have a show for that that will be on Thursdays. On top of that, we have Squid School, um, which is one of our uh, most viewed shows and uh, got some YouTube content that goes along with that. That is a Splatoon show and uh, content stream that you can find on Tuesdays. And Wednesdays, your TO, Synchrony, runs the MOBA show. Currently playing a lot of League of Legends um doing some uh content on uncommon builds in league of legends um so i believe synchrony said coming up they're going to focus on 80 carry kindred it's not the standard role that you will see that champion played in so should be an interesting watch see how he can make that work no the random oh goodness That's, that's bold right there. All right, we got an Isabel. The annoying thing about random is that I have to uh, make the changes to the character Three, icons on the spot. Two, one, go! All right, this is looking pretty playable. And uh, in Pajarito goes. You're done. Zoning with those slingshots and dash attacks. Shields the side B and is coming around to try and punish with the forward smash. Doesn't actually connect and the side B does hit. Slightly to Pajarito so far. Ooh, that's a dangerous situation for a Mithra. That's not the strongest recovery in the game. Does make it back, but gets knocked back off again. With the side B forward smash, the party popper gonna do it. Rito knocks him off stage, and oh, there's just an air dodge off stage. Was not expecting to be there, trying to shield or something. And that's just a really quick and unfortunate stock. Golgotha's terror in a pretty deep hole right now. Has not actually gotten a hit on Pajarito since losing the stock. Commentator's curse, of course. Her dodges past the up smash and lands on the ledge. There's the fishing rod. Shields expecting a special move and is able to punish. Forward smash, maybe get a uh, two frame there or something. Oh, and out comes the Pyra. 
Throwing out some side Bs. Good zoning option. The only uh, difficulty with that particular move. Oh, goodness. Not realizing that the up B going to take her straight down after he does it. So Zuchi SDing twice there in situations that were definitely recoverable. So we'll see if they can bring it back on the next game. But uh, though trying to make a bit of a statement here with the random character. Oh, thank you for the uh, correction on that. We do need to get uh, Golden Golf as Terror represented up here. <laughs> Sorry about that, Zuchi. Oh, looks like Zuchi has Pajaritos emotes here got a a tier one sub the pajarito 313 say so, hey, look at looking like if uh y'all are interested in be, being a part of the scene hit up uh pajarito there on twitch send them a follow Get one of those sick woomies. Three, two, one, go! Alright. So, the Lucas is the randomly selected character this time. Man, making me go and... Ooh, same mistake as before, not recognizing the Uppy going to send you straight down once it's done. Uh, so Golgotha's Terror needs to uh, maybe do something like an air dodge to get back the ledge in those situations, or just air steer closer to the ledge before they activate the Uppy. Side B's coming out once again. Repeatedly enough, though, that Pyarito is seeing them coming, shielding, and punishing after the fact. I did predict that uh, that was a tactic that was not going to necessarily work against the player of Pyarito's caliber. Give him a shield, get a dash attack off. No nair. Fiorito is the best inkling in Tennessee, by the way. We are told. How many inklings are there in Tennessee? <laughs> okay, but uh, I am not surprised based on what I'm seeing here. Oh, accidental cross up there, but he's able to make it work in the end. No recovery going to be happening there from Golgotha's terror. This is a best of five set, so Golgotha's Terror does still have the opportunity to make a comeback, but it's looking like a tough one right now. Pajarito, just strong fundamentals in the game. Learning Inkling is a very good way to learn this game. Um, they have very good, just basic neutral movement. Nothing that, you know, another character doesn't have in terms of tech for that reason, but forces you to use the dash movement very smartly because uh, it's not like they exactly have the biggest, most disjointed hitboxes that you can rely on. You can't play quite as predictively. 
All right, and we've got a Peach. Peach, kind of one of the scarier characters that they could have gotten here. Is a very strong punish game. Great recovery. Projectile game. Looking like a melee Peach right now. Going in with those uh, full cancel back airs. Peach in this game, you know, on top of being able to play well in the air, also does have a, a down tilt that's a pretty solid party starter. Really get some strong damage off of, I believe it's like down tilt to up air. Or down tilt to down air to up air or something like that. Down tilt to re grab and then pop them up. I think, it, I think there's a combo, though, it's like down tilt to down air, and then you land from the float with an up air to pop them up for the next down air, and kind of keep them in a loop like that. I think that's supposed to work, or something like that. I'd need to see it again to, to lab it back out and remember exactly how it works. All I know is she's got a bit of a blender. And the turnip definitely going to do it. No way that a uh, pyroventor comes back from that. So two stocks to two. This is one of the closer matches we've had so far. And we go perhaps a little bit unfamiliar with the movement tech of the float. Which definitely an unorthodox character because of that float. Oof. That up be almost doing her in at like 80. She's going to be able to shield that and forward smash. Fool me once. Yeah, okay, shame on you, but... Seems like uh, Pajarico is not going to be fooled twice. Hefty whack with the crown there. Oh, but disrespects the opportunity of the pirate to run in and dash attack for the KO there. So, pretty even so far. Marito going to capitalize on that puppy, making her vulnerable. Gets a forward air off the stage. Avoids the up B and is able to punish with a forward air. We've just seen up B after up B here. That one actually connecting. A little bit of a mis of mistake on uh, Pajarito's part. He's got to know that it's coming at this point. Runs in for a little bit too slow of a punish. And also gets beaten out by the projectile there. Forward air comes out. Oh, and it's a stitch face, and that will be the end of that game. What a perfect time to pull that. Critical hit. All right. Pajarito sitting comfortably in grand finals right now. Um, at the moment, it looks like off stream, we currently have Ghosty Trickster versus my name, Blake. So that match is still ongoing. Winner will play Zuchi. But for the time being... We are waiting on that one match to finish. Um, but after that point, every match will be streamed because it's just one match at a time.
Choose your fighter. Peaches pummels, Toad comes in to punch them in the shins, yeah. Ready? We'll do a little something something to uh, keep Pahirisho warm here. Uh, I don't anticipate that this is going to finish after the other round. Uh, Ghost of Trickster and my name Blake. Pyrito here playing a random character still with me on my main. Shield. Get him out of it. This is a big deficit I've got to beat. And I did not get the air dodge out in time for that. I can't meteor cancel that apparently. Oh, no, I think I double jumped beforehand, Mario so I should have up it. Still no report. I'm gonna say it's probably safe to play one more. Ready? And then after that, we'll wait. Got a character swap coming out. All right, playing his main. See how this goes. Three, two, one, go! Just making some uh, zoning projectile to come out right off the bat. Kind of a hard read on that. Hits of the up smash there. Ah, 
Ah, smart. I was wondering how he was gonna cover that. Yep. Ah. That one was interesting. I thought I was gonna be able to shield grab out of that, but I was kind of might have missed the input. smash comes out really quickly. I was not expecting uh, a lot of the things he was punishing with that to be punishable. That was a quick one. I want another try. <laughs> Ready? Quick little, little speed run there. We're keeping an eye on the Two, score reporting channel here. One, as go. soon as that match comes in, we'll be back with regularly scheduled programming. So it does stop the splat bomb. I don't know. Oh, that's not where I want to go. Trying to shield grab. It's not working at all. Again, punish every time I'm going for it. DI out of that? It seems like that's something I should be able to DI out of. Not get hit by the uh, second hit of the up smash. Report here from Ghosty Trickster and my name Blake. So, probably was Ghosty Trickster's internet there that was uh, causing those matches to take so long. Ready? But we'll keep it going. We don't know how much longer it's going to take at this point.
facing the way for or boom smash. Okay, so that doesn't work. Yeah, my I got the DI off for survival. It wasn't enough to avoid the second hit. Taking the stock, guys. That's gonna be good damage. Oh. Okay. Just need to get the shield there. We need to stop attacking his shield. I mean, I'm expecting him to like drop it when I take a while to hit it. But I think I'm just telegraphing what I'm going for too hard. It's gonna be damage. Follow that up. Grab. I thought he was going to cross me up. Is that KO? Oh, no. Good stuff. Good stuff. This probably doesn't work as well, but I could try out the uh, Corrin. I just think he's going to box me into a corner really well. Guys, play melee then. Heard you talk about meter canceling. <laughs> yes. Ready? Um, I was originally a melee player. I've played a little bit of ultimate, but uh, don't have as much of a tournament career in that. stuff like that that he's going to be able to do just kind of like unreactable dash attacks that I kind of have to be predicting I probably have a better handle on the punish game now there's definitely a lot of damage that could have been getting it wasn't quite all there about I had it too if I just angled that right. Thank you. 
was hoping I could maybe land back on this splat bomb, but yeah, nothing doing there. Wins. Is there anything going on with uh, Trickster and Blake here? That's, I think, a good five matches or so that we've played here. Two minutes ago, they wrote in general chat and said laggy. So I'm guessing from the fact that they haven't reported a score yet, it's, that was a break between games and they're going into another one. up so that that wouldn't work. Interesting. I didn't get in that direction. input on the ledge. I wasn't trying to get up. <laughs> Not yourself. Don't down air spot box. Just kills me, huh? Wins. DI probably wasn't great, but Ugh. it's annoying when you you see the opening defensively that you need to hit to get out of the situation, but you miss an input or something. All right, here we go. Looks like we might have. Score report back. Yes, we do. My name, Blake, is the winner over Ghosty Trickster in a game three. So it went the whole distance. My name, Blake, going to be up against Zuchi next on stream. Made sure I was actually in the spectator stands, so we're there. GG's, Mr. Streamer. GG's, Pajarito. Good luck for the rest of the event. Definitely looking like the favorite to win it here, but Suchi put up a good fight earlier. See what they can do here. And I also haven't seen my name Blake at all yet. All right, here we go. We got a me sword fighter. Interesting. All right. So this is Suchi, and oh, we need to add the name. Three, two, one, go! 
Just a second. Zuchi on the cloud. And we are down in loser's semifinals here. Loser of this will get fourth place in the, in the tournament. So this is still just best of three. Best of five starts on the next set, which is loser's finals. Zuchi looking pretty good so far. Barely dodging out that special. And my name, Blake. Able to set up a, an edge guard that doesn't quite finish here, but still looking good. Shields and just able to smack him, whack him upside the head with that big sword of his. Up he had a shield. Good defensive option. Falls down on top of an up tilt, though. Gonna sit over here in Blade Beam and make Blake come to him. These can be tricky. Occasionally, you know, they're, they're not a very common character to see. And so, occasionally, there's just, you know, one of the specials, one of the many specials that they can have. Uh, that catches you off guard because you just don't know that move. <laughs> All different custom me sets are legal. So not every me sword fighter gonna be coming into the game with the same move set. doing a pretty good job of uh, hiding Zuchi back right now. I'd say that as he gets dash attacked in the face. Zuchi taking a three stock to one lead. Ooh, gets knocked off the stage though. And again, good edge guard scenario right now for uh, Blake. Oh, hits the up smash, but it's a weak hit it looks like. I'm not going to KO from that. That, however, is going to hit all the way up. Zuchi so going for an up and whiffing, but not punished for it. Like, trying to make that thrust move work, but it's taking a little too long to get there. It needs to be a little bit closer to the landing of the up to punish. Blade Beam for the edge guard. He's got a, a Link Up B, basically. And that's just going to get forward smashed. Zuchi with the JV3. Zuchi dropping out. Might be changing character. Might be just changing the stage here. We'll have to see. Gonna be some discussion here about what stage they're gonna go to. Um, me Sword Fighter looks like they had a, a very kind of horizontal ground game focused game plan here. Um, but they also might want to consider being able to keep the pressure on because sometimes Zuchi will run away and maybe charge limit or throw blade beams out. Um, so being able to close distance and prevent them from doing that super indefinitely might be nice. And they do each have their projectiles. Um, 
Blake also will not want to go to stage. I think we still have the light light on, don't we? Yeah, probably won't want to go to a stage like uh, maybe Lilat or Yoshi Story or somewhere where the edges are slanted because uh, they seem to be getting a lot of mileage out of that boomerang blade that they're throwing out for edge guards, and that will decrease in utility with those kinds of ledges. Blake actually go into the inkling. So, completely new strategy here. Seems like they're relying really heavily on their B moves right now. Do a dash attack to do an up smash. Interesting. They're, they're playing uh, very reactively here. They're not trying to put on a lot of pressure for the cloud. They're kind of standing and waiting to see what the cloud does. Inkling, you know, with their speed, with their projectiles. There's a lot of capability to control the way that the match goes to put out hitboxes in certain places to for force their opponents into certain positions to you know threaten with splat bombs if the opponent stays away for too long you know could be throwing a splat bomb at this charge right now oh no what a awful time to run out of ink there right on top of a cloud with a finishing touch gets the berry just goes for the double hit is actually still going with this move um, most players will opt in that position once they've got the berry to cancel the use of the, the roller there and use either a forward smash or if they can get the positioning on it, an up smash. But they just kind of kept rolling. Trying to rickroll him. Ooh, might not be paying attention to the ink mechanic here. Uh, he's run out of ink a couple of times now and has not uh, spent a lot of time recharging it. Does so there, but gets punished for it. Dude, just runs up in shields and gets shield grabbed. Ooh. Oh, gets pushed off by the finishing touch and actually has to upbeat or recover there. That buys a little bit of time for Zuchi. <laughs> a little bit of a standoff there, standing right next to each other with their shields up. Blake is out of ink. Want to see them recognizing that. There they go. And they're able to get a dash attack off, although Zuchi able to charge limit, and that might end up being worth more, ultimately. Just trying to run up and shield, probably fishing for a finishing touch with limit here. That's exactly what they find. Three stocks to one in Zuchi's favor. Looking for that rematch with Pajarito here. Still got Golgotha's terror to get through at this point. Jumps over Blake. Decides to charge limit there. And decides to just charge ink to come to a gentleman's agreement, I guess. <laughs> and uh, Zuchi does have limit here. Going to start playing the juggle game, try and rack up a little bit of damage, and then spend the limit when it will actually KO. Cross slash off stage might be a good option. Has been going a lot for the finishing touch. Oh, gets knocked out of it. I don't know if they used a move or if they missed. does have a pretty significant amount of rage built up, too. The knockback is going to be uh, very significant. Not wanting to get buried there. It does look like Blake doesn't know exactly how to punish out of the berry optimally, but uh, still not a great situation to be put in when you're at 192. Now one very good answer to the uh, berry. There it is, the finishing touch. 
one good answer to the berry is to shield it because you will not get hit through the shield and uh so shielding that into something like a finishing touch out of shield could also be an option Do have to be a little bit careful with that, that you don't just get run over as soon as you drop the shield, but there are some options for getting out. So next up, we will have Losers Finals. It'll be Golgotha's Terror versus Zuchi. Zuchi going to get nice and warmed up on their way up if they're going for that rematch with Pajarito. Rogotha's Terror, however, has been sitting for a little while. Sometimes is a factor. Both of these players getting sent to loser's bracket by Pajarito not taking any games. So just looking for Golgotha's Terror here. The match has been announced. Information is in the announcements channel there. Hopefully should be able to get in here. Uh, what link were you trying to post there, Pajarito? He uh, may either allow that or uh, drop that in the Discord or something. Oh, yeah. I should be able to drop that in. Nightbot gets a little bit uh, protective sometimes. All right. Golgotha's Terror is in here. Got scared Luigi here, so maybe that's uh, part of the terror theme that we're going for. Zuchi has looked very strong so far, only losing to Pairito, and has not lost a game, I think, to anybody else in the bracket. Golgotha's Terror, meanwhile, uh, dropping a game to Ghosty Trickster on their way to where they are now. Uh, and that was actually their only match besides Pajarito so far, because uh, they had a, the benefit of a DQ in round one. So, one would imagine that we're going to be seeing the Pyramithra versus Cloud matchup here. So, two sword characters. Knowing how Golgotha's Terror has been playing, probably expecting a lot of side B. So, they'll probably want a... Uh... Honestly, they probably want a fairly small stage for that so that it covers more of the stage. So, it's harder for Zuchi to just retreat out of range of it. But, uh, I also don't think that... Uh, Zuchi is going to be overly worried about that. They seem to have their mechanics down. Um, going to be able to space around that in neutral and force Golgotha's Terror to probably be a little bit more creative about how they manage to land it. Should 
Should be seeing Zuchi join in the match fairly soon here. Ready? There it is. Cloud versus Pyramithra. They do primarily seem to be playing Mithra. Got Blake. Three, two, one, go! Gassing up Zuchi here. Love to see it. Forward air into down tilt into neutral air. Solid punish there. I like the follow ups. It's definitely going to need to uh, be practicing making every hit count. There, I think the down tilt actually lost him some time. Uh, so. Might not want to make that kind of the bread and butter combo here, but the dash attack is really nice for uh, those sneaky pickups in neutral. So she does have limit charged. Gonna be able to punish. That up B, not that up B though. Not expecting uh, Golgotha's Terror to do it again. If there's one thing that we have learned about Golgotha's Terror, is that he will do it again. Nice up tilt from Golgotha's Terror. Pops the cloud up, unfortunately does not follow it, doesn't chase it. And so the follow up hit leaves him vulnerable. He gets punished for it. Nice shield there. Let's cross slash. And the limit blade beam, so up a full stock at this point. More so. Great juggles. Trying to zone with back airs, but the dash attack is going to scoop right under that. Both dodging each other's projectiles quite well. Luigi gets popped up on a platform. Maybe some more damage here. Pops right over that. Smacks him in the face of the back air. And Zuchi is one stock away from taking game one. Misses the limit cross slash. Dash attack whips. Gets another cross slash. Great bait there. Nice little tomahawk. Whoo! Mighty forward smash. Spooking him a little bit, but uh, the shield will tank it. Liking this up air juggle that he's got going on here, but I'd like to see him commit to it a little more. Is able to charge limit, though, and that will clean things up with the finishing touch. Game one goes to Tucci. Game two coming up. We have not seen any other characters out of Golgotha's Terror so far. It's been ride or die on the Mithra. So we'll see if that continues or if they're going to give something else a try. They do have kind of a game to throw away here because it is a best of five. Uh, but if they were to lose, they would need to make a 3-0 comeback to get back into this. Both players stepping out to make sure that uh, stage and the characters are correct. Looks like Zuchi's all set. Just waiting for Golgotha's Terror to make their decision, see if they end up uh, playing the same character here.
Goth is terror taking his time to think. Might be thinking hard about the stage. Might be thinking about the character choice. There it is. Actually ends up going Snake. First we've seen of this. Interesting to see how it works. Snake, a character that uh, would be very irritating to try and approach if you know how to set up the projectile walls with him. But uh, fairly slow up close, so can be challenging to approach as Snake usually relies on the projectiles to do all the approaching for him. And approaching into Cloud's sword is going to be really difficult here. Yeah, we're seeing no grenade throws. The C4 going down way over on the left side of the stage, so that explosion is not going to do much for him there. Might have been trying to uh, lay the C4 on top of him. Not realizing it was uh, already out. Goes for a Nikita. It's going to leave him pretty vulnerable. It's popped up. Uh, it already has a limit again. It's him with a dash attack. Tries it again, and that's not going to work a second time. Nice little jab combo. Ooh, could have come in with a back air there. Probably would have hit. I'd like to see some more grenades out of the snake here. Um, those are a really powerful control option. Just completely shuts down a significant chunk of the stage. For the time that it's out, that enables you to put a hitbox someplace else, cover multiple options, take some space. Oh, Limit Blade Beam, catching him with the first few hits, but uh, he just kind of tanks his way through. Not going to survive that dash attack, though. Three stocks to one in Zuchi's favor. Looking for that rematch versus Pajarito. Gets the dash attack, gets Limit. Some good damage there. Misses the uh, juggle opportunity, though. And misses the limit blade beam. Let's hit with a C4 there. Great. Down tilt into up air. Forward smash will take a stock. And the box goes out. And <laughs> Zuchi is having none of the clownery. Looking for his JV. Up in air, air in a bunch of times. Deciding to just charge limit here. Like, okay, I took 17%, whatever. Can you just taunt behind him instead of using the move you want to do? Trying to bait out a, a roll or something, maybe? Really just gonna charge limit instead of finishing the fight. Jumps into the Nikita. Dash attack off the side. Now has a limit again. Runs around in circles to avoid the Nikita. Coming up in shielding. Maybe trying to get the uh, finishing touch out of shield or something. But doesn't really need it. Just lands a random aerial. And that is going to do it. So this is a best of five. You have one more chance for Golgotha's Terror. Mitsuchi has looked pretty strong so far. So we'll see what Golgotha's Terror can figure out for this uh, poten potential last match of the tournament for him. Mitsuchi trying to run the gauntlet right back into Grand Finals.
Waiting for the next game to start here. Big Pog. Komodo Hype. forgot about the Sophie emotes. I think I still have those, right? I hope I still have those. Oh, wait, I'm not on my profile right now, so I can't see whether I have those. Shoot. Well, Ready? Sophie's emotes are adorable. All right, here we go. Sticking to the snake. Let's see if they chose the same stage. Three, two, Going to Kalos. One. Interesting. Go! Sets up a C4 trap. A lot of the time what you're going to see out of a uh, competitive snake player is trying to drop the C4 on top of your opponent. So when you're up in the air over the top of them, you drop that down. And if you stick it to them, then you just have a free KO option whenever you launch them. Dropping it there, you know, like a, like a mine when you're playing with items. You know, competitive player going to keep that in mind, going to generally try and avoid that. Might slip up occasionally, but you get a lot more immediate benefit from it if it's stuck to the player. Solid use of the Nikita. And the presence of the uh, C4, it must be said, on the right side of the stage was kind of forcing Zuchi's hand about where he wanted to go. So, making it just a little bit easier for uh, Golgotha's Terror to control the stage and land some hits. hitting a back air there. Limit Blade Beam going to put down some good damage. Trying to keep center stage here. But uh, be able to slip through. Used from a stealth game after all. It's good at that sort of thing. Really good spacing on the cross slash here. Zuchi just kind of stopping Golgotha wherever Golgotha's pair is trying to get into center. Some good movement reads, some good zoning. Trying to approach, but uh, deciding the better of it with the C4 being there. Throws him away from the C4, so you've got a little bit more private time with this snake here unimpeded by intrusive explosives. Oh, actually reads the roll, but just mispositioned by a little bit. It's crossed up. Again, just a little bit too far away there. Catches him with the cross slash, has limits. Launches the limit. Tries to charge a smash attack. Maybe not going to uh, knock Snake out of his upbeat. Too much armor there. And the Nikita just goes right by, not trying to curve it back around. So, ooh. Sneaky little C4 use there. Ooh, dodges the finishing touch. Again, I'd love to be seeing some more grenades from the snake. A lot of different options for angles to throw them at, so it's a little ambiguous. They do pretty decent damage. It's definitely something you need to avoid. And they can set up into other things. 
Not to mention you have better mobility while you're using it than if you uh, are trying to use it in Nikita. Dash attack, trying for the Nikita, and he's going to get hit with a finishing touch. And that will be the finishing touch for Zuchi in this set. Zuchi has made it back into Grand Finals from the loser's side. Still as yet to lose a game to anybody other than Pyarito, but Pyarito is now the opponent. See if uh, Pyarito ends up sticking to their inkling, their main. Ready? Yep. Looking like they're going to be going all out from the get go to try and finish this out. Three, Set one grand two, finals. It is a best one, of five here. Go! Pyarito being very sticky, getting in there. Does get shield grabbed, though. Maybe we'll keep that for a little bit. Some good damage going down here from Suchi. Great up the out of shield. Some more damage. Pyarito playing very safe for the time being. Suchi is doing a lot of good stuff right now. I'm liking his punish game. He's looking stronger than he has been. It's safe, goes to the limit blade or bl limit uh, cross slash, doesn't catch it. But so far, still playing safe. Just has not been opened up at all by Pyarito so far. Speak of the devil, Pyarito opens him up. Imitator's curse. Charges a whole bunch of limit. This is pretty solid from Zuchi so far. Would really love to be able to get this stock pretty soon and cement a lead. The percent lead, it's wet cement at best, you know. Can still put some footprints in there. Can still kind of get stuck. But now Zuchi's looking pretty solid. They definitely got a shot here. They can keep up this level of play. Cross slash, ooh, that up, he gonna get punished. Got some paint on him. Taking a couple of hits. The bomb does get stopped, thankfully, by the blade beam. Get an extra credit, but nothing huge. 33% is not a big lead. If you were to go down right now, which you probably will, still pretty even. Hits here. There's a big combo from Ayurito. Good damage. Keeps him stuck there with the splat bomb. Those are the traps. A little bit too predictable running all the way across the stage with the roller, but Ayurito able to recover and get this edge guard and take the lead back. Over relying on that up the out of shield here. Pyarito starting to sniff it out and uh, punishes it pretty hard there. 48%. Defense on Pyarito's part. Just not losing this stock here. Yeets him off the stage. Goes off for the edge guard. This is really dangerous. This cloud. He doesn't have a great recovery. Does make it back. Oh. 
is just shielding back to back. That's one of the scariest moments in all of Smash Bros. When you and your opponent are shielding right next to each other back to back. It's like playing a game of chicken. Pyrito definitely going to win that one. A perfect edge guard setup. Nothing a cloud can do from there to get away from that situation. So Pyrito up one game to nil. They win two more games out of the next four. They will be the champion. Zuchi, meanwhile, still got a long way to go. Needs to win three out of the next four. And also will need to win three out of the five after that. So this is a double elimination bracket. And if Pyrico were to lose, that would be their first loss, not their second. So they're not eliminated yet, and uh, Zuchi actually has to beat them twice in order to knock them out of the Three, event. Two, one, go! It should only be fitting, because uh, if Zuchi were to win this round, then they would each have won one set against the other. Oh, that's so sick! He threw the bomb and used that to force a grab release. Which puts Cloud off the stage at a really awkward angle and allows the Inkling to just run off and hit a forward air. Really tricky edge guard setup. Late back air. Going to be able to edge guard with the bomb and nothing. Cloud can do. Pyarito running away with it right now. Grab thrown off stage. I'm really not liking the limit charge from Zuchi when he gets, you know, Pyarito in a bad spot because Pyarito is coming in and putting a lot of pressure on. I feel like if uh, Zuchi were to try and keep the zoning pressure up, maybe trying to keep a juggle going, might be a better choice there. You're gonna take the edge guards that you can get, I figure. Landing with the forward tilt, trying to keep himself safe. Does get punished for the uh, spot dodge, but not quite for it with his stock. He's able to mash out before the smash attack comes out to punish the roller. A use of bomb from Pyarito is really tricky. He'll throw it at you, knowing full well that uh, he doesn't have to worry about it if it gets shielded. And he just goes for another hit, expecting the opponent to jump out of shield at that point. He's able to connect a forward air that takes out Zuchi. This is going to be three tournament points in a row for Pyarito. That is a position you love to be in. Ready? Right back into it. No hesitation, same characters. Just figuring out the stage. Going right back at it. Three, two, and right back to Pokemon one, Stadium once again. Go. This is his counter pick, and he's sticking with it. I like the forward air, the bomb, kind of ruining his day there. I like the idea to cross slash there. Uh, beats Pyarito's defense. Not that time, though. It's going to get him back here in the face. Ooh. Lying. Maybe a little bit on the cross slash. Um, Want to see him mix it up just a little bit. For the first time, it only caught Pyarito because Pyarito moved out of shield. But seeing it come out a second time, Pyarito has been shielding it fully every time. Ooh, unsafe backer on the shield. Might have expected to cross him up and didn't. Not a ton of damage. Ooh, and no DI, so Zuchi not going to survive that. 
Zuchi with a good uh, setup to knock the Inkling off stage at any rate. Probably didn't mean to throw that blade beam, gets hit with the bomb. And the rapid jab is going to put on a ton of damage. The other part of that rapid jab that's so good for Inkling is that it paints the opponent pretty much completely at that point. Um, so it's applying that, you know, damage and knockback debuff onto their opponent. Zuchi finds a stray hit, able to keep this relatively even so far. Good damage there. And then just opts to charge limit. I'd like to see a little bit more follow-up on that. I think he can really apply some pressure from range when he gets in on Inkling at that point. Trying to up B him. Good move from Pyrico, knowing that he doesn't have Legend Bits ability anymore. Just tapping him back off. Interesting. I don't know if you read that that was going to be a single hit cross slash, but hits him nonetheless. Zuchi a little bit high on damage right now, but does get an upbeat. It's going to do some decent damage for him. Just at this point, any smash attack from Pyarito probably going to do it. I don't think you can say the same for Zuchi just yet. Gets dunked underneath the stage by the splat bomb. Zuchi could be on his last stock of the tournament right now. Really needs to play carefully and get rid of this inkling stock right here. Before he takes too much extra credit. Threatening back airs. Pyrito not budging an inch. Just jumps over him. The up throw into up air. That's big damage for the inkling so far. Looking to potentially take the game right here, right now, is Pyarito. Oh, big smash attack from Zuchi. Going to take it the last stock. It's definitely a close match. Possibly the closest these two have played so far. Oh, but that might get punished. No, not quite. Does hit the cross slash. Inkling shield a little bit on the low side. Could be an opportunity for Zuchi to capitalize here. It's a blade beam. Zuchi looking confident, going in for some stuff, trying to get some hits. Limit cross slash, still not at KO percent, but man, it's getting close. But the up yet a shield does not get punished. Great spot dodge and the cross slash again, again, good damage. Shields and knows that Pyrito is going to try and follow up on the bomb with another attack, so rolls away. Great defense from Zuchi. Zoning him out. Oh no, he gets buried! And no matter how high up in the air he goes, it seems Pyrito going to be able to come down and punish Barry. Pyrito is your Columbia State Community College Virtual Esports Open Champion. An amazing game at the end there from Zuchi, looking very strong all the way down, but just 30% shy of being able to take that. So congratulations to Pyarito. GG's to everybody involved. I'd like to thank Columbia State Community College for bringing Bravest Esports out to run the event for you guys. It was a lot of fun having you guys out here, being able to stream this and watch some good matches. Good to meet all y'all. Uh, we have a main channel, Bravest Esports, without the two at the end, uh, that if you are interested in more of our content, it would be better to follow. That's where all of our shows are going to go. Uh, so if you're looking for the Platform Fighter show on Thursdays, that's where that's going to be rather than on Bravest Esports 2. So you can follow that one. Uh, if you're looking for more events... Just let your college activities people know, and we'd be happy to come on back out here and run some stuff for you. We also do in-person events, um, so if you're interested, you can definitely check uh, check out the possibility of doing one of those on campus, depending, of course, on uh, your quarantine rules and everything. You know, every state's doing that differently, and every school probably has a different policy slightly, so it's going to be important to check in on that first, but... 
We do fly people out there to run some events on a big projector or something for like, like that for you guys. So if you'd like to see more of that, let your activities people know. But otherwise, for the time being, this is going to be us signing out from Bravest Esports. Appreciate you guys coming out and supporting your local grassroots esports scene. Absolutely keep on doing that. And if there's anything that we can do to help support it any further, reach out to us and let us know. I've been Jem, and uh, shout out to our tournament organizer for the night, Syncrity. We're going to be signing off. Have a good night, everybody. GG's.